One effect of digitalization that arises from characteristics like economies of scale and the positive network externalities is media concentration. Actually, media concentration is uh, a fact of life that we have become very used to. We all know that the big TV stations is owned by a handful of conglomerates. And digitalization now works on the same logic. Actually, it, it, it multiplies. It can make it much more powerful. So, so let's go, first of all, to the theory what is media concentration? Well, it has to do with the ownership. And there are two kinds of different ownerships that exist. One is what we could call horizontal ownership. That means, for example, that one media outlets purchase or, or merges with a previous competitor. So they're both social networks and one buys the other and, and now there are even a bigger social network or two newspapers and one buys its competitor and, and then they're even bigger newspaper. The other one is what, we, what people call uh, vertical ownership. That basically means that in the production chain, you don't buy a competitor, you buy either a previous supplier or a client that is before and after you in the production chain. So if you are a newspaper, you might start to buy a, a little company that has a couple of investigative journalists. Uh, or you might buy somebody who is later on involved in the distribution and you even buy a little mail service that distributes your newspaper in the traditional sense. So you buy somebody who is before or after you in the production chain. And uh, then there is also a mix between both, what people sometimes call cross-ownership. Cross-ownership means basically these huge conglomerates that are integrated horizontally and vertically. They buy up a lot of competitors, they have a lot of TV stations at the end, and they themselves execute the production chain from the beginning to the end. Basically, they have very little providers and, and they completely, at the end, execute the production chain until they sell the product to, to the final consumer. So this is called cross-ownership. So what does digitalization have to do with both of them? Well, positive network externalities are very potent for vertical ownership because imagine I'm a social network and in my social network now I have a client base and now I want to expand and, for example, integrate a shopping experience into my social network. So people can buy products directly in my social network. Or I develop a payment service that is also owned by my company, traditionally a social network company, so people can pay online and I basically become a bank. What do social positive network externalities have to do with it? Well, I already have the user base. And the more user I have in my base, exponentially more benefit for everybody involved. And for me as well, I can provide better services. For example, I can analyze the user behavior. Once I analyze the user behavior, I can offer them tailor-made products and tailor-made marketing in their shopping experience. So positive network externalities help me a lot to vertically integrate. They actually push me to vertically integrate and get a competitive edge over other competitors. On the other hand, Digital economies of scale, for example, foster horizontal ownership. So traditionally, that has also been a very big competitive advantage of traditional TV stations. Think about it that way. You produce one TV series, and then you basically, well, once you have it, especially in digital format, all you have to do is copy-paste, and you can show it on different TV channels. That's why TV channels sometimes also expand internationally, and they buy up other TV channels in other countries and now we have the same news service, CNN, in all different countries, basically showing very similar clips taking advantage of economies of scale, the infinite economies of scale of these kind of information products. And you see both of these effect, horizontal and vertical integration into these big cross-ownership conglomerates nowadays. And, and we have seen... Uh, a large wave of mergers and acquisitions of big companies like Google. Google is expanded uh, vertically by purchasing services like YouTube or Waze or Motorola, traditionally a mobile phone provider, uh, or Facebook as well, that also expanded vertically and horizontally. So purchasing some services that are quite similar to themselves, like Instagram, or expanding vertically by 
purchasing a, a, a mobile, traditionally was a mobile message services, WhatsApp or virtual reality company. And you get these huge uh, conglomerates based on these digital characteristics. Now, this increasing media concentration is a very contentious issue, a big area of very delicate conflicts. They say the media is the fourth power in the state. It has a very important role. And the fact that media is controlled by a couple of very big conglomerates uh, leads to some serious doubts with regard to this role of the media in a, in a democracy. Actually, uh, the following phrase comes from the Nazi a propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister of Hitler, he said, what you need to control a medium system is ostensible diversity that actually conceals an actual uniformity. So it seems like we have a lot of diversity, but it's always the same, the same message. It just comes through different channels, uh, and therefore there is not really uh, a lot of diversity. It, it just conceals an underlying uniformity. And there are a lot of theories, also conspiracy theories, that people say, well, there are just some people, they do that as well to politically rule and to politically brainwash. And there are certainly some countries and some cases where this is really true, where some very rich individual buys some media station in order to start to brainwash or to influence the political discussion. But that doesn't change the fact that this is not always the case. It's just the, the culprit is simply these digital characteristics that drive the system naturally to this level of concentration. Economies of scale, network externalities. It's not like the Joker and the Penguin sitting in the basement smoking cigars and thinking about how they're going to rule the world. It's usually never as extreme. As I say, there are some cases where, where this is clearly the case. But often it's also simply, well, the economic incentives are simply set up to create these huge conglomerates. Now, the best way to also fight it and to control this is to understand where it comes from. And then pinpointed regulation can be put in place to guide and to create, to socially construct the future that we want in a digital media landscape.